Welcome to Wiki Africa Hour, where Africa's Wikimedians talk to, learn from, and discuss with each other topics they choose. Each session is curated by African Wikimedians to expand Africa's open movement. Today's host is Ceslas Obanyaya. Hello, everyone. I welcome you to the Wikimedia session of the Wiki Africa Hour titled Wiki Africa Hour, The Experience. My name is Cesla Subunaya, and like some of you know, or some of you are yet to know, the Wiki Africa Hour is a monthly broadcast which was um, activated by the Wiki Africa Movement in order to support the activities of the Wiki Africa Movement and Wikimedians across Africa. Wiki Africa Hour intends to share current updates and highlights of Africa Wikimedians activity, to interact with guests and share questions, of course, from community members, and then promote synergy within the Wiki community by discussing topics, projects, constraints, collaborations, and opportunities. For us in Wiki in Africa, it's about making sure that the Wikiwide movement is actually carrying along everybody, especially the African Wikimedians. Yes, there is a Telegram group for African Wikimedians, but that just sort of uh, takes only a handful of African Wikimedians in terms of making sure they get the information and keep up to date with the communications from the Wikiwide movement. There is also the Wiki in Dava conference, but that happens once in a year. This is why the Wiki Africa Hour was initiated, a monthly gathering of African Wikimedians in order to make sure that there is current updates and information shared amongst the African Wikimedians towards, of course, being carried along in the Wikiwide movement. For this Wikimedia Special Edition, we are going to share with you some of the highlights from Wiki Africa Hour's first four episodes. In the first episode, we featured um, Kachumaha, during which she expressed her hopes and uh, the vision she has for Africa being, of course, much more integrated into the Wikiwide movement. Her brainchild, the 2030 movement strategy, and of course, the Universal Code of Conduct were some of the points where she mentioned that she really would like to see Africa being absorbed into um, these um, specific topics and being, of course, um, much more integrated. Enjoy these highlights from that episode. What uh, can you say were the highlights of your tenor as the CEO of uh, Wikimedia Foundation? and the things you were probably most proud of? Um, I think, I, I mean, I, I'm really, really proud of the Universal Code of Conduct and the fact that we all worked together as a movement to get that through. I know it hasn't been easy, and I know that it's required a lot of discussion. And I know it's brought people who didn't always agree into some difficult conversations and dialogue. Um, and you know, much of that wasn't even, I, I wasn't often in those conversations. So that's really work that the movement has done together. Uh, the other piece that I'm, I feel really proud of is the strategic direction for 2030 and how that process of having conversations really um, not only got us to something that I think is like an aspirational strategic direction that really captures where we are as a movement right now, talking about issues of knowledge equity, thinking about the essential infrastructure of free knowledge for the future, but, but was a way in which we were very intentional about ensuring that members of our community from every community, from every part of the world, from all different language groups, were well represented in the conversation and the ways in which I've seen that strength of representation turn into leadership of different communities at the global level. So we see African Wikimedians 
at every part of the conversation today in a way that we didn't five years ago, you know? And I think that that's true. I was talking to someone from um, Wikimedia Indonesia the other day, and it was the same observation I made to them was just, thank you so much for all of the work that you did to really bring your community together. Because I, I don't think we could imagine the Wikimedia of the next five years without Africans and without East Asians at the table in conversation, being very present in deciding how our future should be. And so I'm, I mean, I, I didn't do that work. You did that work, but I'm really, I, I certainly feel like the movement is a better place for that. Okay. Um, throughout your tenure as the CEO of the Wikimedia Foundation, you've been visibly supportive of diversity and uh, inclusion. The first week in Daba took place in 2014 and, um, uh, Asav and um, Anasuya turned up. Your support for Africa's uh, Wikimedians has been evident time and time again, but especially when you attended the Wiki in Daba in Ghana in 2017, uh, Wiki in Daba 2013 in Tunisia, and uh, Wikimedia Cape Town in 2018. How was your experience? I mean, what are your memories for the time? So my biggest regret is that I didn't get to go to the last Wiki in Daba before the pandemic. Um, you know, because and then because we rescheduled uh, the one for Nigeria and then the pandemic happened. And so it's I, like I, I'm like pain in my heart that I didn't get to come. <laughs> um, I, I mean, my experience. So I, I have to admit, I came into Wikimedia a total Africa partisan. I yeah. um, had spent much time working with communities in different country, or different African countries in my previous jobs. And I just, I wanted to see, I, you know, if I'm being selfish, I just wanted to have the opportunity to be able to work with African communities again. But but in right. reality, I, no, I'm, just kidding. I'm kidding. What I really wanted was that the movement be better, better represented in Africa. And I wanted Africa to be better represented in the movement. And so, um, I think my impression has been and has been borne out is that really one of the things that Wikimedia needed to do was to, as a community and as a culture, and specifically the Wikimedia Foundation, was to work directly with African Wikimedians to understand what movement building in the African communities looks like and work with African Wikimedians who have been building movements for well before I joined the Wikimedia Foundation. You know, when I think about the fact that Wikimedia Ghana has been around for quite some time, really in terms of Wikimedians being active and present and engaged, what were the resources that they needed to continue to expand that work? We've seen this sort of like explosion of growth in you know Wikimedia Nigeria, the incredible um, rate of acceleration of user groups across the continent. So my impression has just been, you know, there is so much talent and so much enthusiasm and so much opportunity and so much you know future for Wikimedia in Africa and African Wikimedians in the movement as a whole. It's really about partnering with the broader movement. It's really about the Wikimedia Foundation being having humility and understanding that Africans need to lead in this work. And it's about ensuring that Africans are represented in all of the work for the future. So I want to see, for example, like no excuses. I want to see Africans on the board of the Wikimedia Foundation now, now. <laughs> like, like I want it. I want to see it. I think it is important. I want people to run for the next board elections. And I want to see Africans elected to the board of the Wikimedia Foundation. That's it. Like, wow, that's, the next, that's, that's my next priority. Like, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's really, um, I mean, that's not impossible to happen. And uh, it's not impossible at all. It yeah. Will happen. <laughs> Let's say um, you have um, a special chance to actually uh, say something nice. What would you like to say to African Wikimedians, having recognized all these traits that they possess um, that are relevant to the movement? So one of the things that struck me when we started doing movement strategy was that we did some research. We're like, where are babies going to be born in the next 20 years? You know, wow. like, that's the all. Well, well, it's the only thing you can really predict, right? You can't really predict the future, but you can count babies. And um, the, num the population, the predictions for to today's predictions predict that 40 to, I think it was 42% of the planet will be African by the end of this century. So what I would say to the African community is like, this is your moment. <laughs> like, wow. 
<laughs> you know, you are the future of this planet. You are the future of this community. You are the future of this movement. And I want to see that, like, let's lay the groundwork for that leadership. Let's ensure that you have the resources that you need. Let's be building okay. movement leaders. Um, and as I said, I, I want to see African Wikimedians on the board. I think it's incredibly important. And not just African Wikimedians. I, you know, I'm, I know I'm probably going to have Wikimedians from Africa you know, listening today, but I also think it's, is a comedian from all of our uh, emerging communities. It's time for your representation. It's, it's really important. But it's the song, it's time for Africa. Like, yeah, it's time. <laughs> if you had one message for Wikimedians around the world, um, what would it be? What I'm referring to is I, I, for those who are watching, I wrote a goodbye, um, not goodbye, I mean, like see y'all around the wikis sort of letter uh, last week and shared it. And I think that, you know, there were, there were sort of a few messages in that, which was that um, one is that I do think that the work that the Wikimedia community has done and continues to do is absolutely remarkable. Um, and it is one of the proudest things that I've ever had the opportunity to be a part of. And I will always measure any future work that I do by, and communities that I'm involved with by, by how they compare it to the Wikimedia communities because this is just one of the most special places that I, communities I've ever, ever been in. The, um, which is a call, I think, to this movement as well to continue to really push to be the best version of the movement, uh, to be, as I said at the, you know, a moment ago, well, as welcoming as possible to newcomers, to really see the expansion hey says last they glad you're back well, um, to you. see the <laughs> no no worries to see the expansion of the movement as something that makes us all stronger um to understand that we are you know i think you know this but stewards of something that is truly special in the world and that we have a multi-generational uh obligation to protect it and and to advance our work over the years to come, um, to remain really steadfast in the values. I think it is, we have at times felt pulled in different directions as a movement. And one of the things that I have seen, I, I believe is that, um, you know, in, in the last 20, in the last 20 years, when I joined the foundation in 2014, there was a little bit of, of, of a sense sometimes that maybe Wikimedia um, wasn't as, as like interesting or exciting as other sort of sites on the internet because it hadn't changed much. And today in 2021, I think the reason that Wikimedia is so beloved and respected is because it hasn't changed much, because it's still very core to those original values of independence and integrity and openness. And so as much as I ask you to, as a movement, to continue to evolve and welcome new people in and be welcoming um, and, and to grow globally uh, and understand more broadly our conceptions of what knowledge is and can be, I would also say, you know, don't go too far from those founding values because they're so, so important. You know, uh, our colleague Kim Gill at the Wikimedia Foundation always would say that we're a, um, a movement with a, with a foundation, not a foundation with um, with right. a community, and I think that that is that is true to who we are, and I I want to see this movement continue to lead and guide uh, wherever the movement goes first or goes next. In the second episode, we thought of the need to explain the role of photography plays within the Wikimedia context, and this led to us bringing in some resource persons from Wikilogs Earth, Ghana. Wikipedia pages, once and photos, and of course the Nojadan initiative and the Commons Photographers User Group, precisely the Nigerian Commons Photographers User Group. The aim for bringing the Wikilogs Earth was um, to highlight on opportunities for photographers beyond, of course, the Wikilogs Africa photography context. There is also the Wikilogs Earth where we make sure that. Uh, materials of photography and media are being brought from some very awesome sites in various countries. Let's say a resort, a 
reserve or a game reserve precisely. And moving forward to the Wikipedia pages wanting photos, we felt the need to show how these photographs and media files are being used within the Wikimedia context. That was why we brought the program coordinator in the person of Isaac Olatunde. And then moving to the Nojadan initiative, we aimed at um, highlighting the training to which um, in, in which uh, photographers could participate. And the Nojadan initiative aims to make sure that the photography is um, highlighting experience, skills, and then it's a training ground for photographers. And then in bringing the person from the Nigerian Common Photographers Group, we hope to achieve, uh, which we did, to mention the house where photographers could actually meet each other, interact, communicate, and maintain synergy. Of course, there is the larger global Commons Photographers User Group. Enjoy these highlights from that episode. Now, let's move on to the kind of training, actually, that are available for photographers. Wiki doesn't just expect you to go about taking photographs. They also have a window for trainings for photographers. Ladies and gentlemen, make welcome uh, Minette from Nojada. Hello, Celeste. Minette, you're welcome once again. A lot of African Wikimedians probably don't know what the uh, Nojadan initiative is about. How do you explain what Nojadan is all about to, to, to them in your own personal experience? Hello. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. Good evening, everyone. Yes, uh, as I was saying, it's a project that was uh, initiated by um, a Swiss organization called White Internet. And uh, the objective of the, of the training is so uh, is to train professional and non-professional photographers in Cameroon on the, what is uh, the free culture all about how to uh, I mean how to take good pictures so there was also a master class in photography to in order to train the, the participant on how to, to take quality pictures and improve their skills in photography and uh, the the third, uh, the third part of the project will be a photo exhibition that will take place in uh, that's in October. That's planned for October. So that's uh, a, like like a summary of what the the No Jardin project is all about. So it's really about training the the people who contribute to Commons on how to get the skill to do better contributions. So okay. uh, is there a chance you would duplicate the No Jardin initiative across the Wiki community if the opportunity provides itself? Yes, yes. Uh, I think uh, I think we will be working on it as the Wikimedian uh, Wikimedians of, of Cameroon User Group. I think it was uh, we had a, a, a very good the the in, the outcome of the of the project. I think it was it was a very good one. Uh, as for the Noja, then I don't know if there will be a a second edition since we the Wikimedians of Cameroon User Group was not the, actually the organization initiating the project. But I think having a training like a photo training or a masterclass in photography along with uh, pro photography project is really like a it's, it's really a concept that we I think it will be a good uh, it will, it will be a very good if we, as the user group, or even from other uh, user group from other African countries, could actually replicate because the when people because when people sometimes they when they see photo contests they always think oh no I can't uh, I can't participate because I'm I'm not a professional photographer or I have just a mobile phone or I don't know how to take good pictures. But when we if we can add up to the workshops that we are having to promote. We are usually organizing to promote the competitions like Wiki Loves Africa or Wiki Loves Earth. If we can add on to that, uh, like a training where we invite professional photographers to come and train our participants, well, whether they have a professional camera or just their mobile phone, to actually improve their skill to be able to take better photographs, uh, better images. I think we can really uh, improve the quality as well as the quantity of the images you are able to to contribute in the in the various competitions that have been organized within the Wikimedia Commons uh, uh, framework. Okay. In general, can you give us an idea 
What is the purpose of the photographer's user group? Thank you very much for this question. Um, um, let me start by saying I have been a member of the Commons Photographers User Group um, for the International User Group um, for a while. Um, so I just, for example, the Commons Photographers User Group is um, it is an international user group that bring together um, volunteers and editors from Wikimedia Commons all together around the world to, to make a contribution to Wikimedia Commons. Um, uh, so I just have, 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 have that particular idea in mind that, that maybe we can be able to create a particular user group that will bring together um, uh, users from, from Nigeria um, in such a way that they can be able to make contribution um, uh, to Nigeria-related files into Wikimedia Commons. Um, so the, the main purpose of the Nigerian Commons Photographers User Group is to engage um, uh, new editors that is volunteers across Nigeria. Um, uh, because from what I know, it's majority of the majority of the editors and volunteers that are currently in in the Wikimedia project, they usually used to make their own they usually used to make contribution to to Wikipedia and Wikidata. Um, uh, so part of the purpose of this user group is to engage new members, new volunteers new photographers across Nigeria in such a way that they can be able to, to make contribution to Wikimedia Commons. On the episode three, we thought of the need to demystify the Wikimedia Foundation board elections. And for that reason, we featured the facilitation team uh, represented by Mahutong, uh, Zita, and uh, Bashunda, where they explained the election process to us with the aim of making sure that people aren't um, intimidated by the Kumbasom process. And then we brought um, Florence Dovoa and uh, Maria Sefidari, who these two women have, of course, chaired the Wikimedia Foundation board at some point. And the aim was to get an insight into their lives, their experience, why they were on the board. This also was to encourage women who hope to run for the board, that it is possible for a woman to chair the board. And in the session, they also explained how they were able to juggle between their personal lives, family, other things, and the Wikimedia Foundation board. We move forward to, of course, bring the three uh, election candidates from Africa in the persons of Reda Kebush, Elian Dominique, and Ian Scott. We, of course, didn't um, uh, want them to just be people known from a distance in terms of uh, the African Wikimedians. And since they were from Africa, it was necessary to make sure they interfaced with the African community as much as possible. And the session was awesome. You can bet uh, they expressed their interest, of course, and the reasons behind their motivation to run. And of course, they mentioned what the aim to achieve should they be elected on the board. Enjoy these highlights from that episode. We were the Wikimedia Foundation board chair from October 2006 to um, July of 2008. Could you please tell us what it was like uh, taking the mantle from Jimmy Wells? So what happened is, um, and that's again, I'm going back a little bit in history because the board has changed a lot over the the, uh, the past uh, 17 years. It has or 18 years. It has been operating. Uh, when I joined the board, there were only three people at that time, so we jumped to five. And the two first people elected were both women. Again, I insist that women can be elected. Um, uh, at that time, the foundation was basically just an, a small envelope. It was only uh, a collection of websites. It had a bank account, which was 
are nearly empty. Uh, it owned a bunch of URLs such as wikipedia.org, wikipedia.com as well, and a few like this ones. And uh, other than that, it, that was essentially it. And it owned the servers. We had three or four servers at that time. So it was, yeah, there was no staff, there was no budget, there was no office, there was absolutely nothing. So of course, this has changed quite a lot. What happened at that time is Jimmy Waste was the chairman by default. And I think in his mind, he probably thought he would be the chairman like forever. We didn't really discuss that much, but he was the chairman and that was obvious. It was going to be for a very long time. And what happened is that during my tenure, uh, during these four years, the, the key elements to keep in mind is that this was the most the time where we grew up the most between 204 to 208. Mm -hmm. In 204, very few people knew mm -hmm. about Wikipedia. We didn't have many editors. We didn't have much visibility. We had some pre media articles from time to time, but not very frequently. And, and the growth, the main growth of Wikipedia was around 206, 207. And the problem is that as a foundation, we really struggled to keep up with this growth. Uh, we, it was very hard for us to follow all the requirement, all the needs that this very fast growing environment was, was living. And uh, Jimmy got very much um, upon re uh, requested, in particular to talk to the press. So Jimmy was traveling all the time, going to conferences, speaking to the press. He loved that and he did that very well. The problem is that in the meanwhile, the operation, the, the activities on the board were not happening anymore. It was not his cup of tea, to say it nicely, and he, he didn't have the time anymore. So there was a, a moment where the board had to set up and say, we need to find a solution. Uh, and we need to actually move away and, you know, move this away from uh, founder syndrome, whatever, and try to grow and now be aware that we need to expand the board and have a different process. And that's when they decided to appoint me chair. And at that time, I, our main worry, uh, we had several things to deal with. There was the worry of Jimmy, which of course felt like maybe was stripped of something but we reassured him that he would be there forever, like we love him, that's our Jimbo. Uh, and the second thing is that we feared as well the community reaction and the potential founder reaction and the press reaction, thinking what's going to happen if Jimmy is kicked away. So we had to deal with that and it went fine and everybody could see that we made it well. And the one thing we decided at that time and which is still ongoing at the moment, is that we decided that the following chairs would always be community members. And I don't know, and maybe Maria will tell me if they decided to change their mind, but very visibly since then, the only chair people we had were always community members. So that was just a growing process and, and we managed very well, I think. I think uh, with with this said and this answer you're giving us, it would be nice mm -hmm. to get a glimpse of uh, Maria's thoughts or maybe mm -hmm. the current realities of juggling the board chair affairs and other aspects of one's life. Maria, could you help us? Of course. Um, but first, let me say hi, Stislaus. Hi, Florence. Thanks for having me here. Um, <laughs> um, I would say that the advantage I had when I became the board chair was that I had had previously two years as vice chair. So in a sense, I had had strong onboarding and visibility into what the role would entail, right? Um, especially with the second year being given more responsibilities so that the ramp uh, wasn't as high as, you know, a normal board member becoming suddenly chair, right? And that helps, that helps a lot. Um, mm -hmm. I would say that there's uh, three different moments uh, during my tenure as a chair, right? Like the first year, it's it's quite a thing to become the person that suddenly people go for answers. And you know, when they bring you problems, they're not your run of the mill problems, like they are high level problems, right? Um, it's fortunately, you gotta have a lot of, um, high level organization skills. I think this is really, really important. And you have to be able to keep track of a million things. That's, I think it's 
a requisite just for being a trustee, but if you're the chair who needs to have visibility into most things that are happening, uh, even more so, right? Um, with the second year in which you are more um, used in a sense, like you've, you you have a routine down, right? Like you get into the inertia of things. It's, I think it was the, a very fun year in that sense, in that we tackled really important topics, right? Um, and then it, there's the third year. That was the, I call it the unexpected year, last year, right? Um, at the beginning of the year, and then when I talk about a year, I talk from one Wikimania to another Wikimania. I have already indicated I'm not going to continue as a board chair, okay? I will not run in the next elections. Let's prepare for a transition. It was part of the of the board priorities for the year, all right? And we get to, to February, and in the board meeting at uh, February 2020, um, I also uh, tell the board, you know, I'm, I'm, I need a maternal leave, a maternity leave. I'm going to have a baby. Um, it's a great opportunity as well for Natalia to become uh, the acting chair, have more responsibilities. Um, Ezra became an acting vice chair. So you have trustees that are stepping up that are going to get during this period in which nothing is going to happen until basically the, the, the Q4 meeting, the one that's about the annual plan. It's, you know, it's, it's a good moment for people to start getting their hands dirty a little bit with more responsibility. What happens in March 2020? Uh, the entire scenario changes, right? Like there's a global pandemic. We have to close the office of the foundation extremely fast and start working from home. Um, it's it's a very, very difficult moment. Um, the foundation reaches out to, to the trustees whose um, terms about the spire and says, look, we don't think we can do community elections now. We don't think we, if we could even get community candidates that could, like everyone is being so affected. People are getting sick. People are dying. People are losing their loved ones. Um, we're thinking about, you know, uh, postponing for a year, with the hope that then it might be in a better situation and you, we can get community participation, um, and we can have, you know, strong, good candidates and a good ele election process. So we have this situation in which um, everything is appended. Um, I am taking calls, even though I'm maternity leave, I still have like really burned into my mind, uh, having my newborn baby uh, crying while I'm still in a board meeting, trying to move things forward and help, right? And uh, this is the unexpected year. We didn't have, I didn't have a plan for the for this year. So we have to come up with, you know, what are we gonna work on this year? What are we go gonna do as our board priorities for the year? And of course, within this uh, frame of movement strategy that we already have the movement recommendations. They came out in March of last year. So how can we keep moving forward uh, without you know, halting everything in this context in which it's extremely difficult, right? And so um, I'm very proud of the board because we were able to um, keep the trains running in a sense. Uh, the staff was wonderful, of course. Um, Personally, I reached the end of the year very, very tired. Um, and I know everyone else as well, in the sense of um, everything went extremely online, right? Like the amount of free time you had, it just shrank so much, right? Um, we had community conversations happening every weekend. Uh, we need to move forward things like movement strategy, for instance. And it was hard and we know we, without any in-person conferences, and this is a movement that has learned to depend on in-person conference in order to move forward topics and reach consensus and make decisions, um, having to figure out how do we move that online and have, for instance, global conversations. And then we started figure, finding all the challenges, right? Like time difference challenges. How do we make sure that everyone can participate? The language challenges. In a sense, this has been positive because it has forced us uh, to make sure everything has to be available in at least 10 languages, in at least the major languages. And let's see if we can get, um, you know, people from, from uh, requests from other languages and we can see, make it happen. Childcare, we've, as Florence mentioned before, the conversations about childcare, it, they were possible in some cases because that's another thing. This is a very international board. People are in different regions and, you know, the, the spread of the sickness or the availability of vaccines varies. Varied a lot. In my case, 
there was no childcare available. You couldn't just, it was impossible during lockdown to get someone in your house, right? So I had to change how meetings happened. There was no, no possibility of having, you know, two or three day meetings of five hours straight for three continuous days. If you're having a, if you have a baby or you have someone dependent on you, you just cannot do that. So we started experimenting with, for instance, for instance, let's have uh, meetings in non-consecutive days. Let's have meetings that are like an hour and a half long or two hours long. Trying to adapt um, to the situation in ways that would reduce the burden on everyone at a time where you know everyone was trying desperately to do their best. Um, it's been a really, really hard year to navigate. Of course, I, I know everyone understands that and in their own context has been through that, right? Um, I'm hoping that uh, we're gonna get through it all together in the movement as best as possible. As I said, I, I'm really proud of, of how the board has handled it. Um, we've been moving forward um, with movement strategy, we've been moving forward with all the, um, the governance um, reform that came from the governance review that we did um, in my first year of, of as chair. So in that sense, I'm happy, but uh, I will admit I, I was, uh, I think we all felt the burnout as well. How is devoting a huge amount of time to the movement for free, in quotes, going to benefit, mm -hmm. let's say myself in the end, if I decide to maybe run and maybe get elected? How is it going to benefit me? Not financially, but what do I get out of it? I mean, what benefits can one derive from being on the Media Foundation board? And one of the things I did when I was chairwoman was to actually establish what we have now and change over time, of course, but what was the first vision and mission and values of our movement so as to make sure that board members are aligned with that and mostly the brand new staff members we hire are also understanding what is important to us and what is negotiable and what is not negotiable. And what do you mostly derive from being board member? Well, you have your hand in this. You can actually lead that in a certain direction. And that's that's so that's such a satisfaction. All of us can do it as a regular member, but when you're a board member, you can do way more. And that's the big thing. Mm -hmm. That That's the reason why you stick there, even though you're super tired, as uh, as uh, Maria was saying with the baby boy. And the baby boy, when you see some uh, blackness around me, it's that the baby boy is a big boy now. <laughs> 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 wow. and, uh, he's a 15 years old guy and he's moving around. He's very unhappy because he wants to play with it. Uh, well. uh, but yeah, that's that's the big thing. The, um, the power, the power, simply mm -hmm. the power to move in the right direction. I had a very close call. And it takes and courage, it takes courage, to, courage announce to announce your candidates, candidates once again, once again for, the for the upcoming uh, election. What, what is your motivation? Is your motivation? Oh. Uh, first of all, uh, it's take a lot of courage and hesitation until the last minute. Uh, this election uh, for me is uh, for like the last uh, election. I'm supported by a great number of communities and people. Uh, and uh, it is uh, their confidence in me that motivated me for the second time to be here in the board. Uh, for me, it's really important to understand that a lot of people or a lot of communities uh, support me to get in the, into the board, because the age of uh, such a large global community requires a responsible person uh, who will put in place uh, mechanisms or will uh, assist or, or help person uh, who will put these mechanisms uh, on the movement. So this is one of my motivations uh, at this time. Uh, one could say you took your sweet time before announcing your candidacy. Before announcing your candidacy. Why is that? And why is that? To put your name forward. <laughs> Thank you. Um, what, the reason why I took a long time to think about to put my name forward for this position is because this is a very big um, responsibility to take on. Uh, being a board member. It also requires that, so I, I did have a lot of people encouraging me, a lot of groups encouraging me, uh, much like like uh, like Rita. Um, 
but the reason why I hesitated is because, like I said, a lot of encouragement, a lot of responsibility, but also it requires a lot of sacrifice. Um, Fl uh, Florence uh, already sort of mentioned that uh, earlier, um, as did Maria, uh, that it does require you to give up a lot of your uh, volunteer sort of activities. So, you know, you've got to leave the board that you like the, I'd have, you've got to leave the chapter positions. You can't uh, engage uh, as, as easily with uh, members of the foundation for, for very good reasons related to conflict of interest. Um, and and that, that has an impact on your volunteer activities uh, and, and all the, the projects, sort of, sort of, certainly all the projects I'm involved in, uh, especially trying to promote things like, um, a stronger presence uh, for for African editors um, in in the Wikipedia community, um, uh, copyright advocacy, which is something I'm also very passionate about. Uh, that's that's one of the reasons why I was sort of hesitant in terms of why I'm running and why I feel so passionate about it. There's essentially three reasons, um, but they all relate to community. So when people ask me, you know, like, what what is Wikipedia? What is the Wikimedia movement? What is the free knowledge movement that we're a part of? Um, for me, it's a community. Things like Wikipedia is sort of the result. Things like the Wikimedia platform, the technology is just the platform that we sort of make that happen. But it's really sort of the strength of the volunteer public benefit spirit of our community and strengthening that. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, the first question we, we have for you is, uh, you are putting up your, your name as a candidate for the first time. What motivated you to put up your name? D'accord. Donc, euh, pour moi, c'est important de d'intégrer, comme je le disais tout à l'heure, la, la, le conseil d'administration. Moi, je ne viens pas dans un esprit de peut-être euh, emmener à changer ce qui existe déjà, c'est-à-dire à changer ce qui est déjà fait par d'autres communautés. Par, par, je veux dire les autres membres euh, du conseil qui ont travaillé précédemment, mais l'idée c'est d'apporter une euh, d'apporter de l'aide, d'apporter une plus value, pourquoi pas, et dans la communauté puisque la communauté est diversifiée et on a plusieurs plusieurs euh, compétences, chaque personne selon son domaine de compétences peut apporter euh, son aide. Donc pour moi aujourd'hui euh, en intégrant la, le, le, comment dire, le conseil d'administration, ce que moi je souhaiterais, c'est que on puisse emmener la communauté en général à travailler plus à l'intégration des personnes, par exemple, euh, qui ne comprennent pas la langue anglaise. Je veux dire, euh, je prends l'exemple sur ce cas-là parce que on est, on est arrivé, enfin, suite à mes différentes participations au aux différentes activités du mouvement, euh, je suis ressortie avec un certain nombre de questionnements parce que je me disais que j'ai des idées à partager, j'ai des choses à dire à, aux autres par rapport au débat qui est en cours parce que je peux comprendre tout le contexte de, de ce qu'on est en train de faire, mais peut-être intervenir en anglais, ce serait un peu difficile, par exemple, euh, donc ça m'empêcherait de partager mes idées. Mais si on avait la possibilité, par exemple, de permettre aux personnes qui s'expriment dans les autres langues de pouvoir avoir euh, une lucarne, je ne sais pas pourquoi pas, trouver à trouver la formation à faire en anglais pour pouvoir les intégrer davantage ou alors ben, lors des réunions, trouver les méthodes pour les interprétations pour pouvoir leur permettre de s'exprimer davantage, ce serait bien. Donc pour moi, en fait, c'était le fait que qu'on ait inclus l'option capacity building dans, dans, le, dans la stratégie 2030, c'était vraiment la bienvenue parce que pour moi, il fallait travailler sur cet aspect-là spécifiquement pour pouvoir permettre à toutes les communautés d'être intégrées et d'apporter de, 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 leurs idées dans le développement de la communauté. Parce que si on ne le fait pas ainsi, on risque d'exclure un certain nombre de personnes qui certainement pourraient envoyer leurs idées à, pour l'évolution du, du, de la communauté. Donc pour moi, en intégrant le conseil d'administration, c'est de permettre à ce que ces communautés, enfin c'est de proposer des idées pour que ces, communi ces communautés-là puissent être davantage intégré à travers le, le, le brisement des barrières linguistiques. Donc ça, c'est de un. Et deuxièmement, 
essayer d'apporter également même mon expérience en matière de communication à la communauté. C'est vrai, la communauté communique, mais je pense qu'on pourrait améliorer euh, la manière de communiquer de la, de, de la communauté, selon, communiquer selon les communautés et communi envoyer les informations selon la langue de compréhension de chaque communauté. Je pense que je peux aider à ce niveau-là euh, à apporter mes idées au conseil qui pourrait des idées qui pourraient servir aussi pour toute la communauté en fait euh, okay. en quelques mots ok uh, merci so um, Elian was trying to tell us that first she would like to foster community integration at um, all levels because um, currently she feels there is maybe um, some things that are being lost in translation due to maybe some um, language barriers and all and that is totally relatable uh, so she's trying to build a community that would enhance or she, she's trying to make better the community that actually makes use of um, swift uh, use of various um, languages so that whatever that is being communicated will be generally interpreted and understood And then she, she hopes to um, foster a better capacity building for the Wikimedia uh, communities across Africa and, of course, the Wikimedians across the world in entirety. So those are the two focuses that um, she's hoping that she could bring to light if elected on the board. Donc, uh, and on the fourth episode of the Wiki Africa Hour, which held on 30th of July 2021, We featured the two great wiki events, the Wikimania 2021 and uh, Wiki Indaba, where the core organizing teams were brought to give us a background peep into their activities in terms of how these events are organized and how these events can benefit you and your work as a Wikimedian. They did justice to that. Enjoy these highlights from that episode. I couldn't agree less when you said that there was need to amplify the voice of Africa, in quotes, on the global stage in terms of the global discussion. What advice can you give any team or community by looking to organize some sort of pre-conference, be it for Wikimania or Wiki Indaba or some other Wiki thing in the future? So coming to your question, like which kind of advice do I have to the community that might want to organize again, maybe pre-conference or similar kind of projects? The one is that uh, communication. They should maintain communication within the participants or the communities that they need to involve. That would be easier if the, the, the communities involved, they do understand better what is the purpose of that kind of pre-conference or similar event. The second thing is commitment. Uh, yo, if you see these things happening, there is some way someone gonna be needing to be very committed with uh, looking out, <laughs> that, ensuring that everything is going smoothly. So yeah, I think this is very important. The third thing is the mindset of that we are ready for this. This helps us to or anyone who wants to organize this kind of uh, events to keep moving because um, overcoming the fear or the spirit of saying we are not ready, we are not ready, no. Feeling that we are ready for this helps to keep moving. Then the good team actually, yeah, will be a good option uh, and a good thing to have. Having a good team of people who are active because sometimes some activities they need someone to be available even The hours that are not convenient to others. And the last two things is that they should keep synchronization with the WMF uh, team that is responsible for the particular uh, grant because some of the advice can be helpful while they are moving along the plan. And the last thing uh, is the COVID-19 issue because the global now uh, the global pandemic has been a challenge to most of the countries so before they decide on whatever pre conference or uh, in person gathering they should be considering about covid-19 issues whether they are 
right situation allows them to. Was, I mean, Wikimedia is stewarded by the steering committee, to my understanding. What is the role of the steering committee? And I mean, can anyone join? And how is the location for these Wikimedia conferences chosen? So the steering committee uh, has, personally, I think, has a very major role of uh, assuring that uh, Wikimania takes place. Uh, so I think the main task of the steering committee is uh, to uh, make sure that every year we uh, again organize uh, Wikimania. Of course, uh, uh, there's the selection process, but it's really uh, moving forward, guarantee that this event continue because it is important for the community. Uh, the second aspect is to advocate for the role of the community. So, um, of course, uh, uh, there are many partners, there are many people involved uh, in Wikimania, uh, in Wikimania, sorry, my Italian pronunciation of it. That's um, right. <laughs> um, there are many uh, people involved. And of course, uh, there is a continuous uh, exchange with the Wikimedia Foundation that in the uh, recent years has, has, uh, has gained a major role also in facilitating the event and in supporting it. Uh, on the other hand, what is important about this event is really the, uh, the initiative of the community, the space that we can make for uh, uh, the, all the proposal and all the uh, engagement uh, of, uh, of the community. So guaranteeing that the community is at the center of Wikimania is a part of uh, our duty and uh, the last aspect is also making sure that uh, the experience of the past uh, nourish uh, Wikimania in the future so that we uh, uh, take advantage of uh, those experiences and that we learn uh, one edition from the other um, so this is mm, in, uh, in general terms uh, uh, the role of the uh, Wikimania steering committee um, the members of the committee so you were asking, uh, so the people that uh, compose uh, the committee are normally um, people that uh, organized previous uh, Wikimania or they had a, a major role uh, in previous uh, Wikimedia. So we normally cop them or there are people that propose themselves to join. They can be also people very active in events. Um, in general, uh, we had proposal also uh, throughout time uh, of people that wanted to join in and they can bring uh, experience, they can uh, uh, provide obviously um, experience of the community and other events. And so they've been uh, invited to join uh, and nominated, but in general is based mm -hmm. on uh, previous uh, edition. So the steering committee is really um, a role of legacy, a role of uh, uh, continuity um, um, related to the previous uh, events. And uh, lastly, how uh, we select the venues. Uh, um, this year, of course, uh, uh, we went virtual uh, uh, for COVID. Um, we also uh, believe that it's important to not put the community uh, at risk. Uh, so this is uh, also a reason why uh, an online event was uh, the best solution. But in general, um, there is a, um, the first criteria is uh, um, it's a, an unsaid criteria is to have a Wikimania around the world. Um, this has been uh, um, a main topic for many years. Wikimania uh, has been turning around. Uh, we had edition in Europe, in uh, Latin America, in Africa, in uh, the United States, uh, in Asia. And uh, right now, we, we would love to have an event uh, in Asia. So uh, it's going to be, let's say, the next uh, uh, venue. Latin America also will be uh, another, uh, uh, another turn. So we're waiting to, uh, to go there. Um, I think this uh, international... Uh, um, um, movement is important is of course not the only criteria uh, every edition we look at uh, when um, we used to have a bidding process so we used to have a competition let's say uh, to uh, um, host uh, Wikimania I was personally a lot against this competition because uh, one of the problems that we faced throughout time is that uh, you have a winner and you have uh, the others are uh, uh, they lose and sometimes they put a lot of effort in proposing uh, uh, their city, uh, their venue. So uh, trying to find solution that uh, may allow teams to work together, uh, like the idea of uh, working with the network of uh, Asian country, um, I think this is a, a, a better option. But of course, uh, um, we also believe that uh, Wikimania should be a space in which uh, communities can uh, apply and can propose uh, their ideas. So I would like to invite you during uh, this edition of Wikimania 
traditionally we have a, a session focused on uh, the future of Wikimania. So please join us there to discuss uh, how we want Wikimania to, to change, how we want uh, to, to be in the future. And if you have a proposal, uh, please uh, come and discuss it with, uh, with the team to make sure that uh, we make uh, this event as more inclusive as possible and uh, we uh, allow also people to propose their own ideas. Personally, I think an event should change a little bit the world. I think uh, events uh, uh, are not only an occasion to gather people, but they can be a chance uh, to transform things, to be um, uh, an engine of change, uh, a way of uh, uh, triggering uh, change in a location. And I personally think that Wikimania can have this power. So when uh, it, uh, when we take Wikimania in uh, in a city, uh, it can give visibility to our topic of free knowledge. And I really hope uh, also the proposal take into account this, and they take into account uh, how fun and uh, experimental and new our event can be. Thank you. Hello, Yamen. Uh, we are coming over to you. You are on the program team. I mean, you are responsible for choosing through the litany of submissions. I mean, that sounds like a Herculean task to do. What does the process involve? So, uh, first of all, it's uh, it's uh, it's uh, it's. I mean, it's a responsibility to be part of this uh, this committee of programming with my colleagues, with Anna uh, Ludovic and uh, all the other uh, volunteers. Um, we, I would like first. I would like to say thank thanks to all the volunteers who who helped us to uh, to uh, to select the session to be part of the program. And it was not easy an easy task because we had we received many submissions. We have received more than 20, uh, 200 submissions, and uh, many of them are very interesting. And we had to select some because we have some limitation at the time, so it was not easy an easy uh, task to select the, 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 the accepted sessions. But uh, we we tried to select the maximum. So uh, on so we selected. Uh, uh, more than 170 sessions to be part of the program, whether live or pre-recorded or on demand. Uh, so also we, we tried when selecting the session to have a diversified content, diversified topics, diversified also diversity in terms of gender of the presenters, and also to, to respect the time zone of the presenter to have uh, to allocate uh, the session to the different time zone to, to make this Wikimania accessible for uh, for all the Wikimedians around the world. As we said, we wanted to make this uh, Wikimania a special one, the most the most accessible and the most inclusive one. Uh, when is the weekend ever happening? When precisely? Because they have been, um, how do I say, some discussions about the possible dates. So when, according to you, and who is the team that is hosting this time? To answer your question, it's going to be a virtual event and it's a three day conference in November between the 5th and the 7th. So as Geoffrey said, this is the place to be if you are interested in how the Wikimedia movement is like in Africa, in connecting with affiliates, in connecting, if you're interested in connecting with um, so many people that we have had the opportunity to reach out to and work with during the pandemic, but also if you're in the diaspora. What is special about this year? What can we expect from the conference, from the program itself? Um, we all know for a fact that uh, the work of the movement, and especially in Africa, was affected by the situation that was uh, presented by the COVID-19 pandemic. But this situation also presented the opportunity for so many affiliates to train people that were beyond their geographical location. So there were so many editors that were recruited and with the length of time and the kind of things that they've done, they've evolved from just being editors to now, you know, being able to take on administrative roles. But the challenge with that is um, beyond the trainings and beyond the opportunities that we offered as a collective, people have been working in isolation. So one of the main things that we can endeavor 2021 is going to be looking at and placing a lot of emphasis on is just the inclusion we want, we need to establish a sustainable dialogue with everybody that we've worked with in the last year. In the light of the Wikimedia scholarships, uh, mm -hmm. 
what will the week in Labour 2021 scholarship look like on a continent uh, where there are, of course, not so many official user groups? Mm -hmm. How are you going to encourage those who want to be part of the community but are not yet organized to be so? Yeah, this is where the inclusion comes in. So, like I said, uh, we've worked with individuals and people and some organized groups in countries that actually have no, how can I say, established affiliates. But then the numbers of the people that we've worked there are able to come and be a collective to be reckoned with. So the Wiki Indaba scholarship one will be to primarily enable digital access to the proceedings. But um, in, in addition to enabling a digital access, it will be able to allow those who have gotten the scholarship to be able to meet and uh, interact with like-minded people in the community because the biggest challenge with that is we could say, okay, there's free registration and everybody will register for free, but then having the access to the places or the things where they can meet people that have more impact than their training could actually afford. So that is what the scholarship for Wiki Indaba 2021 will primarily enable. Now I've given you the insights on why the Wiki in Africa, precisely the persons of Isla and Florence, thought of the need to activate this initiative of Wiki Africa Hour, a broadcast that is aimed towards a better integration into the wikiwide movement of the African Wikimedia communities. How can you be part of this awesome Wiki Africa Hour initiative? First, you can support by suggesting topics, interesting projects, guests you feel we should uh, feature on the Wiki Africa Hour episodes. If there are individuals maybe you can't reach, but you know that having them on the platform would be beneficial to the movement, please just go to the Wiki Africa Hour Meta page under the suggestion platform and put their names there. And we would do the work to get them on the platform. If you have some current updates, news you think we should feature to keep everybody abreast of communication, please go to our newsroom section on the Wiki Africa Hour Meta page and put it up there. And then you can also support by subscribing to the Wiki in Africa YouTube channel so that you can keep tabs on all topics that are discussed. Thank you for participating in our Wikimedia session. I look forward to seeing suggestions of topics, projects, and guests up to December 2022 even. Yes, we would like to have it that way up. And of course, uh, we look forward to seeing you on the Wiki Hour episodes in the future. Thank you so much once again. I remain Sestos Obunaya, your host. This episode of Wiki Africa Hour was hosted by Seslas Obunaya. Let us know what topics you want to discuss and join us next month on the same channels. Subscribe to the Wiki in Africa YouTube channel. Oh!